You know, we've been asked quite regularly how child custody is determined in the state of Utah. And some of the biggest concerns that people filing for divorce have are what happens to their children? What happens to their kids? And as you can imagine, this can get very messy when each parent has a different desire for what happens to the children. However, the court's priority when determining custody is what is in the best interest of the child. It's called the best interest of the child standard. So essentially the way the law reads is whatever the court decides is what is in the best interest of the child. That's the way it works. So what goes into consideration when deciding custody in the state of Utah? Well, a family court judge or court commissioner will hear the case as each side presents evidence as to their case for being the best suited caretaker or primary custodial parent for each child. Since the court decides custody based on the best interest of this child standard, factors like who filed first for divorce will not go into a court's decision on who gets custody. Here are some general factors for determining the best interest of the child in a custody dispute or in a divorce case. Who conducts or provides moral standards and care for the child? Which parent is more likely to act in the child's best interest? Which parent is more likely to allow the child frequent and continued contact with the other parent? The court will look at the depth, the quality, and the nature of the relationship with the parent and the child. The judge or court commissioner may ask a child who the child wants to live with. This usually takes place at the age 11 or 12 or older. But remember, the child's preference is not controlling and the court may still determine custody contrary to what the child wants. So in determining whether the best interest of the child will be served by ordering joint legal or joint physical custody, the court will consider the following factors. One, whether joint legal custody or joint physical custody will benefit the child's physical, psychological, and emotional needs or the child's development. Two, the parent's ability to give first priority to the child's welfare and reach shared decisions in the child's best interests. Third, whether each parent is capable of encouraging and accepting a positive relationship between the child and the other parent, including the sharing of love, affection, and contact between the child and the other parent. Fourth, whether both parents participated in raising the child before the divorce. Fifth, the distance between the parents' homes. Sixth, the child's preference. And as I said earlier, whether that child is 11, 12 years old or older, the child's preference becomes an issue. Seventh, the parent's maturity and their willingness and ability to protect the child from conflict that may arise between the parties. Eighth, the parent's ability to cooperate with each other and make decisions jointly. Ninth, any history of or potential for child abuse, spousal abuse, or kidnapping. And last, any other factors that the court finds relevant. These are important facts that only you would know, facts that you would want to tell your attorney about in making these decisions in going and asking the court for sole custody or for joint custody or for split custody. So what happens after custody is determined? Well, according to the law, the parents must abide by the court's order. The court's decision, whatever it may be, the parents need to follow. Otherwise, they are going to be found in contempt of court for violating a court order. Parent time, or also called visitation, and child support may not be withheld if the court order has been granted and signed. Once the court issues the order orally or in writing, you need to follow it. You, if you violate the court order, you can even not only have to pay the other side's attorney's fees, costs, monetary judgments, but you could even be sanctioned and you could even go to jail. You see, custody orders, even though if we don't like them, they have to be obeyed. Now, custody orders can be modified and changed, but only through filing a petition to modify the custody order. There needs to be a significant change in circumstances in order to petition the court to modify custody orders. You know, 
A lot of complexity can happen in these types of petitions. So if you have a question about how to determine custody in your case, if you need an advocate to fight for you and protect your rights, you need to speak with an, an attorney. Give our office a call for a free initial consultation. 801-876-5875. Again, 801-876-5875. Fast, friendly attorneys are standing by waiting for your call. So call now.